Greetings shipmates and welcome to a new episode of Let's Make Mistakes. Today I am going to be driving the Tier 8 Russian BB Vladivostok. I am also in division with Urban Slayer in there, driving the um, British Tier 8 Cruiser the Edinburgh just in front of me off my port bow. This is a medium up tier game. Every game I've played in this boat so far has been up tiered and this one went better than most. Uh, she is a good ship. Uh, her guns are considerably better than the Synop. How she handles being up tiered, not so much if we're honest. Um, she seems to get splatted left, right and centre and as we know most of these Russian battleships have got pretty weak side armour so while it's punishing enough showing anything your broadside at tier 8, at 9 and 10 it's pretty devastating. And the games have been okay, I can't complain so far, but this one was just a bit better. So here we are as a replay showing this one off. It's not a fantastic game, but it is it is a better game. Um, we'll start off with the early call there. So we was instructed there BC. Now you can see I'd already turned and made revolutions for A along with Urban Slayer, because that was, that was our first plan, which was immediately kiboshed by everyone else saying B and C, so we weren't going to drive over there on our own. A decision that, based on what the enemy fleet movement is right now, doesn't look like it was a bad decision after all. So we've decided we're going to head over towards Charlie. We're just going to see what we can do with the Harugumu there, see if he gets under pressure. Now the Des Moines come up. Now gun rotation is pretty quick on this. You can see we rotate the guns quickly, but unfortunately he's gone behind the island. So there's no shot available to us there. So instead of giving away our position and slamming them into the side of the mountain, we're going to hold that lovely AP for a time which is somewhat more fitting. So we are pushing over towards Charlie. We see the North Carolina there, the Jean Bart, the Gascoigne. We know the Des Moines on his way over there. And then judging by the extra count of the ships, they've still got half the fleet going to A. So at the moment, that's going to be our primary course. Savesky Sawyers is making his way and now the Minotaur's just popped up around the corner on Charlie as well. This isn't too bad, the Minotaur's obviously, it's a strong ship, we don't want to get into AP range so he can start farming us down, but we do want to get into range where we can actually hit him. Uh, a quick question of our Yamato to see where he was going, no response, never mind, we'll just crack on with this one. So we've opened fire on the Sawyers. No, I just had a quick look just to see where he was actually going there, but his guns were pointing in the right direction. So we have taken an early shot out on the Sawyers. And we are sailing reasonably broadside at the moment. This isn't ideal, but the reason I'm doing this is, after I fired, is I want to turn quickly. I want to turn away so I can bring the bow towards the south, so I can still keep the guns on the target, but not get into range of that mine at all. Now Urban's dropped his smoke here so he can start farming down that Soyuz which is what we're planning to do as well as we go through. And obviously yes I'm driving through a smoke cloud but with smoke penalties at these kind of distances makes no difference whatsoever. It's not protecting me, it's just protected him. And we haven't got a bad 7k volley in there, we've got over pens and a few penetrations. So there's a little bit of damage to get us started. Now the plan here is just to play a little bit on the throttle. I don't want to move too quickly away from him. And while he's not shooting us at the moment, I do want to take advantage of farming him down. He's put himself into a bit of a position here, which isn't really going to end too well. Uh, our, we have set our defensive AA sector across to our port side as well, just to ward off any of those planes coming in. You know, it's not a lot of damage. The AA isn't particularly good on this boat, but when you're in Edinburgh where it is particularly good, every little helps. And we got 806 there with two planes. Woohoo! So AP shells are out on the Soyuz. He's starting to reverse now. So I'm just going to keep angle to him. A couple of defended ribbons nice and early. And move away. Now we notice that smoke cloud there. And my perimeter is roughly up to him, which is 18 kilometers. So he can't hit us. So I'm away from the Minotaur. I don't want him farming me. Now he's sitting there 17.8 just starting to back up the soil is going gone down so I bring the guns across to the Minotaur maybe he's going to go backwards maybe he's going to go forwards now in this position here the plan is to turn my original plan was to go straight at him into Charlie there because that North Carolina and B is tucked in behind the islands 
turn the bow and we'll start going straight at the Minotaur. A plan that's going to change quickly when uh, he does his next manoeuvre, which is first he disappears. And at this point I'm thinking, that's fine, that's not a problem. I'm still going to go at him. I want to close the distance to him quickly so I can engage him and get rid of him. And that's where we're going to keep going for a little while. And what we will see, which is going to change my mind, is a smoke cloud will appear. Now, the reason when this smoke cloud does appear... Now, here we go. Well, he's gone into the cap and there's the smoke. Now I change my mind about what I want to do. I was going to go straight at towards him. But with his newly acquired um, smoke screen and the fighter coming in there from the Audacious... If I stay on this course, he's going to farm me all the way in. So the plan now is a quick turn, use this island as cover there to protect us. And I'm going to drive around this island to come and engage the Minotaur from the other side. It's going to do two things. It's not going to allow him to be able to hit me, because clearly I'm spotted by the CV at this point. Because he'd be farming a lot of, lot of HP off of me. And it also means that his smoke cloud, the time on his smoke cloud, is also going down as well. So this is a good opportunity now for me to use this island cover, move around the island as quickly as I can, and try and engage him at closer range. Now, he does have torpedoes. They are 10 kilometer torpedoes, so we need to be reasonably sensible about that. But the opportunity to use the cover is probably the best thing we could do right now. Um, scores are going particularly in our favour at the moment. We're 100 points down, and we're three, two, three boats down to there too. It's still early, we're only 7 minutes into this game, but we do need to make this play pan out pretty quickly. Urban Slayer's disengaged from his position, he's following me round as well. And I'm looking at iron up the gas going. Now, something else is going to happen here, right? We can see the AP being fired from the Minotaur at the Azuma who's behind me. And uh, there's been a call for some scouting, which would have been nice, but that's not going to come. Now... Blind firing in smoke is certainly an option, but again, because of my proximity and range to him here, if I open fire, there's a chance I can hit him, I might get one or two shells on him. I'm not likely to get any critical damage. So I've elected not to shoot for the minute and stay undetected, because again, he will start farming me if I start firing and I need to hold on to my health. I want to be, that's going to come in very, very useful later on in this game. So we can see there he's still streaming his fire out across. Now I can tell from that gun angle he's quite angled to me as well. And here he is, now he's popped up. And now we're going to start going for the shots. This is disappointing opening volley. We did get the resets, but we've only got 7k off of him. And now I'm going to have to play the game. If he comes forward as he will, he's going to come and he's going to swing hard to starboard. So immediately I know that what's coming next is torpedoes are coming. So I'm going to stay on course. Just bait him a little bit, start a small turn, and then slam the power in. Now again, this gets very disappointing here. This is 4.8 kilometers away from me. We're firing across. We could have given a little bit more lead on there, but we got four over pens and one penetration and a ricochet. Fortunately, he's gone down though. We've managed to avoid the torpedoes, and the Gascoigne is also turning away now. So now we've got a good opportunity to keep the boat bow on, move in towards this cap. Now, the course I'm taking here has to keep me between that Gascoigne and the North Carolina over there in Bravo. I've not seen him for a while, but I don't want to expose too much of the side of the ship to either one of these boats. So I'm staying bow on for the time being. Now, that's going to give me the opportunity to use my front guns and my rear guns. Now, the Grosovoy has turned up. What this is now going to do is, because he's 10 kilometers, he's broadside, He's firing torpedoes, so my, my course is now very, very much set. I don't want to deviate from this too much, but I am going to push up a little bit, and then you're going to see me rudder slightly to the left, hoping, hopefully, to bait any torpedoes he's fired, that they should run down the side of my boat. If we've done it right, if he's, if he's got it right, then there's a good chance we're going to take maybe one or two on the nose, but we're not going to take a huge amount. And here come the torpedoes now, as we predicted. We've managed to call this just about right from the looks of things. We're going to take the cap. Now, I could bring the guns across, which we're doing so now, towards the gas going because we've lost the Grosovoy. And now, slowly, 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 Urban Slayer's dropped his smoke. He's going to sit here and farm on this gas going. We're going to try and push the gas going away. And I'm going to start moving forwards. Again, I'm not sure of the fleet movement of the others. We've not seen the NC for a while. 
So we need to be a little bit careful about what he's doing. And here he is, he's just popped up again. But because the DD's still there, I need to stay bow on to him, really. I'm going to turn away now. I risk a second spread of torpedoes. He fired them a little while ago, which means the next lot aren't going to be too far away from us. So I'm just going to keep bow on. Go straight towards him, get the power in. Now the fleet movement down to the south around the 3, the H and the I line means that reasonably the left hand side, the port side of the ship is protected so I don't have to worry about too much fire but just between this NC and the Gascoigne. So we're going to maintain angling to both. The NC moving forwards there means that we don't want to risk going too far forward because if he comes around the corner, guns on, we're finished. Now, the Grozzer voice causing me a lot of concern, which is why I've asked the CV. He's got his rocket planes up and he's flying around and he's gone for the North Carolina. And now he's going for the Gascoigne. Instead of spotting the DD, which we know is on low health, he's using rocket planes on a battleship. Very, very frustrating. We know he's low health. He should be being finished off. All he's got to do is spot him. And, you know, his planes are already over there. They're in the area, but he's not interested. And at this point here, we are 500 points behind. 500 points and we've only got two caps and we're down five ships to three so we've got a hell of a lot of work we're going to have to get through here i've inquired again of the cv's ability to spot but he's having none of this so um we're just gonna to have to go without as to speak now guns forward again so we're gonna have a little go at this gas going we're still maintaining angling the rear gun i'm kind of trying to move the guns left and right they do rotate quickly which does give me the option to keep one rear turret over towards the Megami and the NC over there and the others towards the Gascoigne. This is disappointing now. We're going to take this shot on the Megami who's just starting to come forwards. I don't think we're going to get an awful lot of change out of this. Nope. Very, very little. Gascoigne's going away from us now. Main guns on the NC. Again, I'm still keeping course there because the Des Moines... He's coming into farming range of me now. So I'm going to have to do something about that as well in a minute. And I can see that Friedrich is coming in as well. So we're going to make a decision here now, which is going to be pretty critical to this game. Is I've decided now to push and then turn in on the NC. But in order to do so, we give the first volley there and I slow the ship down somewhat. Because the NC was staying where he was. And I didn't want to arrive around the corner with my guns not loaded. Now we've got a good volley into the side of the Des Moines over there. And now with the guns loading, I dropped a half throttle and I'm going to start picking the throttle up again now so I can move in. Now the, again, we know the gas has gone away. Fortunately, Urban Slayer picked up the Grozovoy who'd circled back behind us and he's taken care of that. And now we're going to push him. Now I'm going to elect to risk somewhat the side of the ship against the gas gone. Because if I can close the distance into the Bravo cap quickly with that island group that's around E5, I can protect the side of the ship, not only from the um, the Gascoigne if he turns around, but also the Audacious' rocket drops or torpedo drops, because he'll have to come around the island to hit me. So now we got the hammer down, we're going to push in as hard and quickly as we can, priority sectors over to our right, our squadrons up, just to try and mitigate as much damage as we can at this point. I mean, health pool wise we're doing okay. But we are still 400 points down, so this play needs to push quickly and we need to, we need to make this stick. Because we are still losing ships. We have a volley out on him. Uh, they've saved a the rear gun and fired that at the Des Moines because he's about to beach on the island. Now, the Azuma's managed to take care of the North Carolina, which is very, very useful. And my guns have taken care of the Des Moines as well there. So now, now we're looking better. Now, now we're on the ship advantage. They're pushing away. And um, there's just Freddy, just, <laughs> just is Freddy to deal with. So we are going to push hard in, as I've said before, get nice and tight into this island, protect the broadside from the Gascoigne on the starboard side and the Audacious. Now, fortunately, we lost the Azuma there, but you know he done he done a good job, pushed in with us. So now it's up to us to get this uh, Friedrich down. Now, mild angling, just want the back gun in, and then we're immediately going to turn the boat back again as well. Now, I'm not running rudder shift on this, but we'll cover the build afterwards. Maybe we should, but us, with a 20-second rudder, it's not really going to make too much of a difference. So here we go now. We're going to start moving the boat in. We're just going to use the front guns. Maintain what we can there. See what we get. Now, we probably should have gone higher there, because, look, we've got one over pen and four ricochets. So I either should have gone a bit closer to the bow or a bit more into the superstructure. 
which isn't saturated. The audacious, as we'd hoped, is having to bring his planes all the way around the island now to come in on me. The Frederick's getting closer and closer. Secondaries are locked on, but they're not showing at the moment, but they are locked on to him, and there we have a close quarters expert finish. And just this audacious to concern ourselves with. Now, we're still 200 points down, so taking this cap has become my uh, main priority. Gascoigne's turned up there. Now, I know I've got protection from him there, but I'm going to have to weather a few of these torpedo drops, which is why all our health pool that we was losing earlier has become more important that we hold on to it now. Uh, it's like complaint in chat, never mind. Doesn't bother me, I'll carry on. Now, I need this cap. Now, what I was originally planning to do here was go through Bravo, slowly turn towards Alpha and head over towards Alpha. Because Caps are going to win us prizes. A 200 point deficit, there's only 4 minutes left on the clock, we wouldn't have the time to win this otherwise. But the gas going up there, he's been worked over by the rest of the fleet and Urban Slayer's managed to secure the kill on him, which has also freed us up to manoeuvre the ships a bit more now. Uh, he's going to come south into this cap with me and I'm going to have to weather these rockets. This was agonisingly close to getting this cap. Now, another change of plan has been formed based on the fleet movements. Nothing wrong with doing so. But right down there, the rune is now coming towards Bravo, which is obviously to work on resetting me, because if they can reset me or kill me at this point, there's a good chance they're still going to win this game. So I'm going to start turning the ship away from, well, way towards the rune, because there's the only place with guns that are going to cause me a concern now, which does rather bring me away from the um, going towards Alpha, but that's the risk we're going to have to take right now. If we can get rid of the rune or the Kerr first and get this cap secured, then we've got a much better chance of me flying off to Alpha and getting myself bombed out of the game from the CV. He'll just farm me alone. Now we can see the planes coming in behind. Ordnance is out. And we've got a good solid hit on the rune. Now, part there's two reasons to turn here. One is so I can get at the rune and make him turn away from the cap. Because if he's not coming towards it, he's not going to retake it if he takes me. And we need to angle against that curve first. Because he could, he could from where he is, he could be shooting at us. The rune is, that's fine, I'll accept that. We'll get some more ordnance on him. Just get on the throttles again just to get away from the Audacious's ordnance which are coming in, that's another torpedo hit on the side. Uh, no flood, fortunately, so we've mitigated the damage we could take there. He's coming in again from this side. Now I have to turn in slightly to see if we can avoid any more torpedo damage here. I don't think he's running torpedo acceleration though, which is allowing me to uh, dodge more of these torpedoes than you normally would, but with 10 seconds on this we're going to get this cap secured now and all of a sudden our horrifically losing position is looking better now i'm going to stay moving towards this rune but look what's just turned up in the background so we can rear gun him because he's, i don't know why he's decided to do that if he'd have stayed away he'd have probably yeah, still had a chance on this but keep our angling towards the rune and the curve first because they're the ones that are going to cause us the most grief right now and then save the guns for what we can on the Audacious. I know he's coming in. Urban Slayer's pushing towards him, so I can just keep pushing this rune away from the cap. The Jean Bart's got behind Charlie. The Kerr first isn't quite going into the cap there, which is again is helping us because we're still scoring the points that we're going to need to get this game done. But with that distance that we've made on the rune now and the Audacious planes coming in from where they are, I think the Audacious is coming all the way through the cap. He's coming through Alpha. So the rune's not too much of a threat. I'm not in the cap. we got the cap. I'm going to bring all the guns round now. And we're going to see if we can pick up the Audacious as he comes round into Alpha Cap with Urban Slayer. This is a, a little bit of a guess and a quick inquiry of our line who's he's off to ocean as well. Special things happen in special teams, people. And there's the Audacious. Now, with 57 seconds to go on the clock, you know, realistically, you know, we've moved into the lead, but if the Audacious was able to secure a kill on another ship at this point, then we would lose this game. So we need to make sure that doesn't happen. There's only 40 seconds left, but with a 30-point lead, two caps in our favour. The game is in our favour, it is stacked, but yeah, he can. We can lose a ship, so we need to be absolutely certain of this. We'll stay on the Audacious till the end of the game and make sure this turns into a win. And from, from where the game started and from how far back we are, just 
sensible position not risking the ships too early in the game has allowed us to stay in this fight all the way to the end because it's a tier 8 boat and it does seem to get focused an awful lot but there we go 8 seconds left we're going to make it to the end we'll have a look at the score and then I'll show you the build as well a fun bonus now right this is this is the trickery of editing from the minute this game ends now to when we get to the port screen I just cut that bit because it took 20 seconds to load this screen which is ridiculous no heroic achievements, which was a bit of a surprise. But we have managed a rather stonking score out of this one, and we broke 3,000 base XP, mainly to do with, I believe, the defended ribbons and the fact that we captured, and that we did quite a lot of damage to higher tier ships and ourselves. So we are rewarded, but no heroics give you a rough idea of where we are. Uh, what was on the detailed report? Yep, yeah, that was just close quarters. Uh, detailed report gave us... Rough information of where we were, really. No huge damage, but uh, objectives played. And our base before received total on the right, 5,238 XP, which is pretty good, to be honest. Quite pleased with that. So, the value of a stock in port and how we built her out. Now, there's not a lot of options on the consumables, which I shall show you quickly as well. You can just use... Um, Premium versions of Repair Party, Premium versions of Fighter, and Premium versions of Damage Control. Upgrade-wise, we've gone for Main Armaments Modification 1, uh, and that's pretty much your best choice there. You could maybe go Steering Gears, Aiming Systems, uh, Damage Repair, Aiming Systems because I want the Dispersion down because it's bloody terrible, Damage Control Systems. Um, yeah, I think that's probably more useful than Steering Gears, really, because that 20-second rudder shift's not making a huge amount of difference to us. And then our standard concealment, at the lack of anything else, acquisition isn't going to do too much more for us. And then we'll have a quick look at the captain build. Uh, we will get the new skipper at some point when we've got enough tokens. We're not quite there yet, but this is a 19-point captain. And there we go, a quick look over all 19 points being well used, I think, so far there. We have priority target, then we've gone for expert marksman. Then we go for Adrenaline Rush when those guns come down. Superintendent, because we need the extra uh, repairs and heals most likely. Basics of survivability, because I want to recover from any floods or fires without losing repair where possible. Uh, concealment Expert, questionably needed in the current meta, but and there we are. And then we have um, Fire Prevention as well, just to uh, limit the amount of fires. And that's the Vladivostok shown in um, a Tier 10 game. So thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Until we sync again, I've been Bravado. Bravado, out.